and welcome to your go-to guide on how to analyze the structure and overall effect of an article for analyzing argument. Not only is it important to unpack the language of the article and how it positions the audience, it is also handy to understand the structure or as we like to call it, the cumulative effect of an article. This allows you to deepen your analysis and can set you apart from your average response in an exam. So step one, annotating like a pro. We like to use, and we also suggest using an acronym like CATPLAP so that you can remember the structure easily in an exam. We also encourage you to chunk the article down into significant pieces. Then you would zoom in and you would zoom out, analyzing the language and the structure altogether. But first, let's talk about CATPLAP. CATPLAP stands for Contention, Audience, Tone, Form, Language Techniques, Argument and Purpose. This is important to analyze and annotate in the first few minutes of your, re of your reading time and also in your writing time. It's a good idea to note these letters down the side of your article so that you have something to tick off as you go along. You can also find relevant information for this in the background information of the article. It includes really important things such as who the audience might be and who the stakeholders might be as well. Once we've moved on from that, it's time to chunk or chunk it up. Not the best word in the world, but really important because this stage allows you to visually unpack the structure of the article and also works as a plan for your essay. You should chunk where you have numbered your arguments in the cat flap stage or where there is a tonal shift. This allows you to see the overall structure and effect of the article. Once you have your chunks organized, you should critically analyze them by zooming in. This is a focus on language and argument and how they are working together. We actually unpack this further in another video, which you can access on our YouTube channel. So be sure to check it out. After this though, and one of the hardest things to do is to zoom out and look at the cumulative effect of the article. So how do we do it? There's a couple of things that we need to look for in order to make sure we are analyzing structure effectively. Step one, contention. If a contention is stated at the beginning of an article, this means the writer is fairly confident in their views and has a sense of conviction. They usually spend the rest of the article consolidating their view. If stated in the middle or the end of an article, this usually shows that the writer is balanced in their approach, exploring all arguments before making an assertion on their view, leading the audience to easily agree with them by the end of their piece. If a contention is repeated, which is usually is in a speech, for example, this can imply that the contention is consistent and is supported by evidence. If the contention, however, is implied, this can allow the reader or the audience to arrive at the same conclusion as the author themselves, hinting that it is actually an inevitable decision. This option is quite rare, but a good one to have in your back pocket. Next up is dichotomy. Dichotomy is a fancy way of saying an us and them mentality. This is used to simplify the argument and encourage the reader to morally side with the good half of the argument, usually the one that they are trying to convince you of. This is powerful if it is done correctly and is usually upheld by lots of attacks and emotive language. Don't be confused about a dichotomy because often there'll be a two sides to an argument. A dichotomy goes a step further and creates a very strong divide. Another thing to consider is order of points or arguments in the article. The order of the points can be from strongest to weakest, usually allowing the author to gain the audience's approval straight up before consolidating their view. The other way around, however, and the more common approach, is where the author builds up their argument to a solution or a final assertive point at the end of their article. This allows the audience to firmly agree with them by the end of their piece. A small note is to recognise if an article opens with an anecdote or not. The effect of this will depend on the audience and form of the piece, however, usually allows the audience to relate to the author on some level, or allows the author to establish their authority on the issue they're about to persuade us on. And no, it doesn't make the reader want to read on. Next up is the image or other important formatting elements. The image and the placement of it is really important. Is it at the opening of the article, the middle or the end? Once you have determined that, it's important to look at the closest chunk or supporting argument. Does the image help to visually imply something or create a particular tone or complement or support the author's view of that particular part of the article? If you have noticed that there is a connection, mention it in your piece. That is a really easy way to talk about structure. 
Furthermore, when looking at the layout, the use of subheadings or to other smaller titles implies that there is a logical approach to the article and the author will use these to set out their points and to build up towards their final conclusion. Last but not least, we could talk a little bit about the placement of a rebuttal or a solution in the piece. It is important to consider if the piece includes a rebuttal at all. If so, do they use straw man argument or inductive or deductive reasoning to undermine that particular rebuttal? Do they spend a lot of time talking about it or just mention it briefly? It's interesting to look at how an author unpacks and undermines or attacks the opposition in their piece. Also, does your article include a solution? Solutions are a really good way to persuade an audience and usually allow them to understand that the writer's perspective is the correct one. Once you have considered all of the relevant structural elements, you need to consider the overall effect. Here, form and purpose is absolutely vital. If the writer or speaker is presenting to a community that already agrees with them, how will their structure reflect this? If not, how might they choose different elements to suit their purpose? Is there a solution? And if so, how have they developed their authority on the issue to make this solution reasonable? This is vital if you want to move past the average response and into the insightful response in an exam. But how do we write about it? Here are some sentence starters that you could use in your next response. It doesn't have to be the focus of your paragraph, but signposting it in your assertion or at the beginning of a sentence is always a good way to do it. Thanks for tuning in and don't forget to check out our techniques video. Make sure you like and subscribe for more A Study Guides goodness.